All right, Senor Estevez, it's really a pleasure to, and surreal to be talking to you uh, uh, about this project. So my first question is, did you kind of know already when the phone rang and Stephen Brill called you or were you completely surprised? Uh, were you expecting it or? You know, with, with Brill, uh, he and I had been having a conversation about it for a couple of years on and off. Um, coming out of sort of the, the 25 years that I've been in the wilderness, self-imposed wilderness of making independent films, it was, wasn't something several years ago that was interesting to me. And yet, you know, I spend a lot of time driving around the country, driving in the central corridor of the United States, and I talk to a lot of people. And I use that as my own personal sort of environmental scanning, if you will. And mm -hmm. the feedback is always, hey, man, you know, why don't you, why don't we see you on screen more? And if you're ever going to go back and do Gordon Bombay again, play Gordon Bombay, play Billy the Kid. And, you know, enough, if enough people tell you, you're, if three people tell you you're drunk, it's time to sit down. But if you hear it over and over and over and over, it's time to really take that to heart. So in, so 2009, in 2019, Stephen and I had a, a, a call and I was mm -hmm. in my adopted city of Cincinnati. And he said, mm -hmm. hey man, this thing is real, it's happening. Do you wanna do it? So I hung up the phone and I walked in and I talked to my friends in Cincinnati. And they said, look, if, if the series is made and you're not in it, we're not watching. So I was like, <laughs> okay. This is now I'm going to take the conversation to the next level. And uh, and that and that's that's when it really began in earnest. No, I have to say, I mean, it, it probably was like that all over the world, because when I announced the series, I sort of had the sort of same rea reaction as I just kept waiting for you to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me ask you this. Do you have any input regarding to because it's kind of I don't want to spoil it, but it is sort of uh, a tease and 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 shocking and ultimately great to see where Gordon is when this when we see him again. Shocking is the word for sure. I mean, he's you know he's he's sleeping on the couch of his office. He's eating leftover pizza and birthday cake. He's out of shape. He's sort of struggling, you know, struggling to sort of you know get from one place to another. He's he's dis disorganized. He's disengaged from the world. He's like, so it, it was, an, it, for me, it was like, okay, I see where this guy is, but where's he going, right? Is he, and, and the, the disadvantage you have as, as an actor committing to a TV show is you don't often see the scripts until sometimes a week before you shoot them. Mm -hmm. So with a film, obviously you see all 120 pages and you can see where the character's going and you can map that out but there's no mapping with television. And sometimes you, it's all at the whim of the, of the, of the writers. And so my, my hope was that, hey guys, you know, we can introduce this guy and he's really broken, but he has to get whole by the end of, epi of episode 10, which is what we endeavored to do. So as you know, he's a guy who's shut down. He's a guy who's disengaged and he's not the Gordon Bombay that we saw uh, the last time uh, we, he was on camera or on screen in in 96. Now, it's interesting because everybody sort of grown up as well. So I feel it'll hit everybody in a, in, in a very sweet, particular spot. So let me ask right. you this. Is it is it a different process for you when you're choosing acting roles versus when you choose when you're going to step behind the camera and direct? Yeah, I, I would say it is. It's, um, you know, for me as a director, I, I've, I, you know, again, the last 25 years, I've chosen very personal projects, movies that um, couldn't be less mainstream, you know, from, uh, you know, dealing with uh, PTSD uh, with the movie The War at Home to political assassination with Bobby to spiritual uh, uh, enlightenment with uh, The Way. And then mm -hmm with the public, you know, dealing with the intersectionality of, of, uh, of homelessness and social infrastructure. It's like, these are not particularly sexy subjects, uh, and, but yet they were very personal to me. And so I felt compelled to tell those stories. Uh, and so for me as a filmmaker, that's where I, that's where my leanings are. As an actor, I'm, I think much more wide open and much uh, engaged differently, I would say, because you know I started as an actor, um, but I feel like I've always been a storyteller, and you know I find that 
oftentimes actors, especially if you're a young actor, or struggling actor, you look at just the role. This is a great role. Well, it's a great role, but if nobody sees it, no one cares. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the the role, but it's like, what does that role look like in 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 the um, in the macro, and how is that role going to serve you if you agree to play it? And Which you just set me up to ask you my last question because I'm going to run out of time. But I mean that that means that if we're going to see the kid again, because there are the rumblings that that we might, uh, that means that he's tied to a bigger story that you want to tell. Uh, so is that true? And uh, will you be stepping behind the camera to tell that story? Potentially, yes. Potentially, I, I would say yes. And it's, um, you know, if if you if you subscribe to the myth that the kid wasn't killed in 1881 by the hand of Pat Garrett, uh, that character uh, that I played in part two, the old man, Brushy Bill Roberts, if you believe anything he says, he lived a very illustrious, zealot like life uh, for the next 50 years, 60 years. And um, so there's a lot to explore there. All right, so that's a tease. Huh? Including fighting alongside Pancho Villa in the Mexican Revolution. There so, you go, that's a, you know, that's a tease a and a half. That's a tease and a, a half. <laughs> All right, sir, my time is up. Pleasure talking to you. Stay safe wherever you are, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Igual. Thank you, bye-bye.